there's several different ways you could stick the hook on there and you know, just be creative. And eventually uh, something big enough will come along and bite the whole thing. You'll have yourself a fish dinner. There is some seaweed out there. give up on a spot just because you're getting a little seaweed. I mean, it's all natural. Actually, fish eat a little bit of seaweed as well. Some of them eat mostly seaweed. Talking about monkey face eels. Nothing on the beach. So, sometimes you just have to go the extra mile if you want to catch the fish. So, here we go again. The trick is never to, to hurry and to have good boots. See these Timberlands? They have, next to Dr. Martin, they got some of the best soles for you know, doing this kind of crazy stuff. lean towards uh, the way that you don't want to fall <laughs> now right now we don't want to fall the other way so we're leaning very much towards what you're looking at right here there we go just leave enough room for yourself to get by on Never put all your weight on one hold. If one rock gives, which it could, no matter how hard it looks, then you want to make sure that you got another rock that you're hanging on to. Oh boy. Look at that view. Probably the hardest part, even though this other part's uh, probably a little steeper. But uh, it's a little bit easier. So I'm just getting my backpack on right now. And my pole, I could use that as a walking stick. 
That's why I always put a little furniture bottom on the bottom of my poles. Okay. So I can use this to push off on or hold on to whichever way you want to look at lean against. It's a dead bird. Probably a duck. Yeah, these uh, timber, timberland boots, you gotta trust your life on your soul. Never buy something that you don't trust. If it's too cheap, if it's too expensive, save up until you got enough money to get a good pair. If your life depends on something, last thing you wanna do is use something of lesser quality. See, look at all this seaweed today. It was all over in there and it kept getting all over my hooks. I might have been getting like some perch nibbles down there and whatnot. But I decided to come out here where I can actually look down and see where the seaweed is. And then throw my line where it isn't. Yeah, see? The seaweed's mostly in big, large clumps attached to rocks down there. So, I could throw it here and keep better track of my line this way. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set up right here. We could go up to that perch there, except for I don't trust my camera on a tripod up there. Plus, I got this crazy friend that comes every once in a while and, uh, he likes that spot. He doesn't speak a word of English, but uh, I think he's my best friend in the world. Life is like that sometimes. I don't even know his name. So let's get some fishing done here. So here's where we're set up. There's we're gonna be throwing the line. Cut it, um, anchovy into smaller chunks this time. I'm not going to use any of the miracle thread. You can see uh, these are more like uh, perch sized chunks right there. Not saying that you couldn't catch a hungry uh, striper on it. Back when I was a kid, <coughs> we did a lot of pier fishing. That's how we used to chop them. And I always like the tail portion here. Because it's a little bit stiffer. We run it through the bone, directly through the bone here, right back in the middle of it. Boom. Good enough. spot here is um, kind of shallow and the tide is going out towards the lower tide so we're gonna go up to the crazy spot right up there only difference is I have to wear the GoPro on my chest 
so that I don't lose it. I could try to put it on a tripod up here, but if you look up here, there's not really too much space for it. So, we're gonna go farther out there, filming with the chesty. That's what they call it, GoPro chesty. If you wanna get one, by the way, the GoPro chesty, buy the GoPro one. I've owned some of the other ones that come with these uh, $20 kits, and they're not even close to being the quality this GoPro one is. You already get enough bounce by having it mounted to your chest, but those cheaper versions bounce a lot more because it's a real cheap elastic. GoPro fits theirs with a very stiff elastic. Um, I guess the only way that you could get less bounce out of it with one of these is by, they got some kind of equalizer thing. I think they call it a Karma, Karma stick. But uh, I haven't got one of those yet. See if we can get some bites out here. All right, I did feel one bite. By now that sardine is real loose and it probably just came right off. Hopefully the other piece is on there and the fish is still hungry. But you gotta consider if there's just one fish down there, as opposed to a school, and he bit that one chunk, he's gotta swallow that first before he goes after the other one. So, I don't know. Give it a minute or so. No, there, there goes another bite now. It's probably the second piece. There we go. And that's still getting bites. Small. I have a pretty big hook on there and it's a Kaylee. So I might want to go down to the two watt uh, bait holder. This is the two watt Kaylee. Not sure what kind of bite that was, possibly some kind of a perch bite. Time to rebait. Here's the uh, two watt bait holders. And it's not technically a, a smaller hook, it's a different shape, but it's not really necessary to downsize the hook right away because something bigger might want to come. You might want more leverage in a hook that won't break off on a bigger fish. So, but what you do is you put it more towards the tip. That piece of sardine was all over the place. So we'll try this here and, the, and we're keeping the shell on this uh, so it'll stay on there a little bit harder. If they're hungry, they'll bite with the shell or no shell at all. So here we go. We are going right over there right over there a little past where there's some rocks there with some seaweed on them whoops i accidentally hit my bail let's see where am i now hmm i think it's in a good spot right there Okay, I think maybe that was a bad choice. We're gonna go back to these uh, sardines. I know that if I was eating a can of sardines, the last thing I won't wanna do is start biting into a different type of seafood. I wanna keep eating sardines. That's just the way it works sometimes for me. And uh, so I have to relate that to the fish I'm trying to catch. So what we will do is we'll lay off of the, um, the shrimp for now. It's not saying it might not be working in a few minutes. Then put another piece of this juicy tender. sardine and see if we can pull us up a fish here. 
Of course, I do believe it was just one fish alone because when you get like one that takes your bait and then it takes your bait and starts biting us the second time about a minute later, that's not a school of fish. That's just one fish acting alone. So hopefully that fish is still down there. Let's throw it on down and see what we can do. So there, look at the tip of the. Maybe just bit off another piece, let's say. So maybe, okay, now it's going for that second piece. It's nibbling at it. Might just be a very small perch. Doesn't feel like a striped perch. Because those guys, even when they're small, they always hit it real hard. They got smaller mouths than the rest of the perch, and yet they hit the, they hit the line with a lot of velocity. Might need to change your bait. Okay, wait, there you go, see that? Right there. Might be on there, but, oh yeah. Okay, so we got a fish on there. Let's bring this fishy home. Well, oh, I think we lost it. Yeah, we did. Okay, so sardines is the number right now. Whatever it is down there, and I don't think it's too big, but it's the only action I've seen all day so far. Um, it does like sardines. Let's put the head on there. Head will cut a little body here, like that. And then we'll put this through the stiff part of the head like that. Run it through and hopefully fish runs into that hook at some point. Back here where the soft meat is. Yeah. Okay. So we're working on something over here. Maybe there's a few more fish than I thought. Still seems like we're just one fish. Just kind of sitting in one place that feels like eating sardines right now. Okay, so there's a cast. There you go, there's a little action there. And yeah, I think it's a fish. Not a big one. It is one. Nope. Lost it again. Something small. I don't think it's a striped perch. I don't think there's any reason to put a smaller hook on right yet. I don't know what's going on. Maybe smaller hooks. We'll see. Throw it over there again. Hmm. quick way to find out when you're getting a small bite what kind of small fish is biting out there maybe it's small smelt you know I get so used to coming out this spot and hitting these monster sized jack smelt that I end up filleting that uh, when the smaller smelt show up that's just to attract them right there I don't really want that big of a piece on there but all this stuff falls in the water and it, and it creates an attraction and uh, Hopefully a feeding frenzy, and we'll get some fish fish uh, in the bucket. So, we're just slapping on this uh, sand shall we? Uh, if you leave your line there a little bit longer, after you get one on there, okay, there, there, so I got one on there now. I just wait a little bit. Maybe you'll get another one to hit the other one. Okay, there's a little bit, now it's heavier now. You, gotta, you don't want to wait too long though with the sabiki because it'll get all tangled up. So let's bring it in now. And yeah, it never did get heavier. Either that or I lost one. No, it's a big one. It's a jack smelt. These ones uh not as big as some that I've caught, but good enough. And these will definitely have to be filleted. I always bleed them out. I don't think it's necessary for me to show. If you want to see a, a bleed out of fish, I got another video where I do that. Let's get this guy before he jumps on the water. Let's see where to go. There we go. There you go. And when you get a smell, just hang on to it real hard up here. All right, so we might just have to go for a bucket of smell here. 
At least that's something. Yeah, baiting for smell, but that's just the way it goes. That's why I always carry a, like a cloth with me. I got all kinds of stuff on here. I even gutted, gutted the sardine, and right there, those top three hooks, nothing but sardine guts. All right, getting the smell bite again. This time I threw it out there farther. A little farther, farther out there, the tide's still going out. I mean, it's probably going to go out so far today that I'll be able to walk out of here instead of climbing across those rocks, which is nice. I already got two jack smelt. Now, dinner for one person, jack smelt. There's no way I could eat more than five of them. I, never, I mean, you never want to overdo it, right? But uh, the thing is, I know a lot of people that like fish too, though. So if I get a good run on fish, it's always nice to be able to share with other people. Okay, here we go. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you know, and you know, not every day that you're hitting fish, you know, some days out here there's nothing going on. Okay, another jack smelt. And there it is, right there. This is number three. So if I go as far as catching maybe 20 of these, definitely give some of these fillets to some of my friends. See how that hook fits nicely in that mouth there? Okay, I'll show you what I'm throwing it right now. I'm throwing it right over that way. I'm throwing it up farther. I got half shrimp, half um, sardine. Sardine doesn't stay on the hook as well, but it, it scents up the water much more quickly. It's a very gentle fish. It falls apart, you know, real easy. That's probably why the other fish like eating them. Now, when you got a school of smelt swimming around out there, they don't just stay in one place. They swim around in a circle, and then they circle back like 50 or 60 times before they leave the area. So, sometimes you throw it back out there and you won't have a bite, and then they'll be circling right back around. There we go, there's, there's the bite right there. Okay, so um, all right. Since I didn't want you to have to see this whole episode um, from my GoPro chesty, um, I found a little spot here. I moved the bucket over where I normally keep the bucket. And I put the tripod there and I feel like it's a secure spot. It'll stay in one place. We're still going for these jack smelt here. Um, again, I didn't know this would turn into a jack smelt episode, but you really, I mean, if you're fishing for fish for dinner in the ocean, and you're willing to eat whatever, uh, whatever shows up, you never know what you're going to be bringing home. So, you test the waters out. Well, in this case, I had to lower the hook size a number four sabiki and um, go for jack smoke because that's the only thing that's out there right now. Um. I was talking to this other fellow that has a YouTube channel, really good channel. If you want to see it, he, uh, he does his fishing down on the central coast. It's called Calico Outdoors. And uh, he said the perch fishing was kind of slow down there and it, it picked up. And when it did pick up, there are not to be jack smelt, so there's a lot of jack smelt in this ocean. So look at that. Man. You see that? See that? Wow. Okay, that's on there. Let's just bring it in. 
like I said, you can leave it there and wait for a couple others to hook up on it, but with a sabiki, the chances of it getting more tangled up. That's the nice thing about using the uh, two-arm articulator here, is that, is that it won't get all tangled up with itself. With the sabiki, yeah, the hooks will hook together, and that'll just be a mess. Uh, there you go. How big is it? Let's say these ones are about 10 to 12 inches, something like that. Good enough. I'm up to four, so I got enough to make myself a smelt fillet dinner. Uh, it's about five o'clock in the evening. I don't want to stay out past seven, so I'll go somewhere and get a burger or something like that. And then um, cut the guts out of these things, and then play them up tomorrow, probably. Uh, yeah, I mean, the bite is on. I don't even have bait on each of these hooks. Probably don't even need it. Probably don't need any bait at all, but just throw it back out here the way it is. Snow will bite on just about hand. And so they see these feathers, and with the smell, when I got a sabiki, I was perch. When I got a, well, I'm going for perch, when the perch are out there, okay, which they're not. I'll move the sabiki a little bit like that, and then I'll wait. Wait about five, ten seconds before I move it again. The smelt's a whole different thing. Now you just keep on shaking it, shaking it, shaking it. Now there's a school of them out there, but they're not sitting in one place. Remember, they're fish. They move. And these schools of smelt, this school right here is probably swimming over to where the rocks are in the middle of the water right there, and then coming back and swimming over here. So, if I caught them on the back half of the loop and they were headed up that way, it'll we'll probably be another 30 seconds before I get a bite. That's why it's not biting right, that's the only reason why it's not biting right away. Like I said, I can just keep shaking the line until a ball of smell comes rolling back around and bingo, there we go. They'll see the line moving, we'll start biting, we'll bring in another jack smell. Okay, and they're back in the neighborhood. So yeah, jack smell, you can just keep on shaking it and go boom, boom, come another hit there. Keep shaking it while they're hitting there. It's kind of spasmodic, is the way I've heard other uh, fishermen describe them. You know, some people say they're stupid. Well, I don't think fish has much of a brain, no matter what fish it is. You know, um, but I don't think they're so much stupid as they're just really hungry and they see something they want to eat. There's another hit right there. So the ball is right back over here again. Keep on. Uh, Shaking this line, bringing the attention to it. Some of these hooks don't even have bait on them right now, so they're more likely to bite on the one with, uh, with the bait, of course. They hook something there. It's not like it. Probably a crab. It's amazing how high those crabs can jump when they want to. Because they catch onto your line like that, you feel like a bump like that. Nothing else. It could just be a crab. They're hungry too. I um, got some gulp live here, but that's not what I'm going to use. This is a um, this is something that works really good for jack smelt, and it doesn't fall off. And I keep these in here in my gulp live, um, you know, the gulp live fluid. Uh, just because uh, it's to track fish. The scent of this stuff is supposed to track fish. So let's get uh, five or whatever we need of these. So. Yeah. We'll put uh, three of the root beer and three of the, uh, the fluorescent ones. I would think the fluorescent ones would show up better. But uh, whatever attracts their attention. I mean, they, um, 
I don't really think they care what color it is, but it looks like something that's alive to them. And these things you can shake the heck out of. Okay, once you get these on the line, and you won't lose it like you will with the sardines. The sardines, again, like it's hard to beat the scent, but like I said, I got, I've been keeping these in the, um, the, uh, the gulp live water, uh, the gulp live fluid, and so they got a little bit of scent to them. Normally they just come dry in the packet and they stay good for a long time, and they work good dry too. I mean, you don't have to put them, you know, you can use every little, you know, every little weapon that you can find, you can use it. Or you can just go kind of basic and the nice thing about these is they don't smell like some of this bait does, you know. Put some of this stuff on your hand. It takes you about 10, 15 minutes to wash it off when you get home. So, yeah, this is, works really good. Really good, you'll see. The jack smell, as long as that school stays out there, uh, it's on now, because I don't have to keep rebaiting it. I was losing a lot of bait there. Until we get, uh, get our jack smell on there. 